Okay, let's look at an example. <clears throat> this is example 5.1, but I'm going to modify it a little bit. Now, example 5.1, it just asks you to, to draw a three body diagram. But uh, let's actually solve for something. Now we have a rigid body and it's a metal bar that's glued to a wall this way. Okay. You apply a force, 1200 newtons force, at this location, 2 meters from the wall. And this metal bar is 6 meters long. And the mass of the bar is 100 kilograms. Now, I would like you to find all the reactions at point A. Okay, actually go through the calculation and find the reactions. It could be reaction forces as well as reaction moments. Okay, so <coughs> let's use the uh, solution steps, right, and go through that. So step one is define coordinate system. Now this is obviously a two-dimensional problem. Okay, so x and y. So I'm going to just Define my x this way, y goes up. Okay, that's conventional. Okay, that's conventional. You can define it separately. You can, you can define it x going to the left if you like, or y goes down. It doesn't matter. Okay, as long as your mass is consistent with how you define a coordinate system. Okay. Step two: draw your free body diagram. So, free body diagram. Just draw the rigid body without a wall. Okay, do not draw any physical attachments. Right, so no wall here. Just the rigid body, and then you draw all the forces and couple moments applied on the rigid body. So here, obviously, I have this applied force okay, of 1,200 newton. And I'm going to call it F1 for that. Here I have reaction, and I have reaction forces. And since this is glued to the wall, so I'm constraining it in both directions, X and Y direction. So, so at this point, okay, I'm resisting it okay, in the X and Y <coughs> direction, motion. Also, don't forget about the weight, right? So the mass is given. So, so the weight of this rigid body must be taken into account, and the weight is applied at the center of gravity. Okay? The center of gravity, so in this case, okay, this is a homogeneous piece of metal. So, that's my assumption. Okay, so this means that the material, whatever it is, okay, is, has the same density everywhere. Right? So the center of gravity will be right in the middle. So that's where the weight is applied. Now weight is mg, which is 100 kilograms times gravitational acceleration, so that's 981 newtons. Okay, that's it. This is my free body diagram. So I have two reaction forces, applied force, and one you know, weight right, due to gravity. But is that it? Is that really all the forces? No. Keep in mind, Rigid bodies has linear okay, forces as well as rotational okay, effect. So this rotational effect is moment. So <coughs> do we have any moments here? Well, there's no applied couple moments. Okay, so so we don't have that. But look at this kind of reaction, this kind of support. Right, it's glued. Right. So, so I don't allow this rigid body to rotate at all. This means that this rigid body would resist okay, 
the rotational tendency in the form of moment. So this is my moment reaction. Okay? Call it M. Okay. So let's go M A. Okay, so now it's complete. So I have one, two, three, four, five items. Okay? On the rigid body. Now, I want to point out that the direction of these two and yeah, the reaction forces, as well as this, the reaction moment at point A, the direction are assumed. I don't know actually yeah, whether this R X points to the right. It could be pointing to the left. I don't know. R Y, again, it could be pointing to the uh, downward in reality. But since they are the unknown, I cannot know beforehand. So therefore, I just have to assume a direction. So I just assume that this goes to the right and this goes up. Similarly for MA. I don't know that this actually goes counterclockwise. So that's my assumption. Okay? So directions are assumed. Okay, so this guy, this guy, and this guy. Okay. So now, with the free body diagram in place, just apply the equation. All right? So now we have equation. Since this is a 2D case, we have three equations. Some forces X, some forces Y, and some of all the moments about any point. Once again, it doesn't matter any point. Okay? Now, This sum of forces, okay, since you're free to sum, I'm sorry, sum a moment, okay, it's your choice, okay, which point you choose to sum moment about, okay. So, I'm just going to call it point O for now, okay. Which point you choose will have different consequences, okay. If you, if you choose a smart point, then your solution will be a lot easier. So let's let's consider this a little later. Okay, let's talk about the forces first. Alright? So these three must satisfy some things. So equation one and two and three. Okay, let's deal with forces. Get out of the way. So equation one. Sum of forces equal zero in the x direction. Next, expand left hand side by applying this equation to the entire free body diagram. So, left hand side, just look at all the forces in the x direction. So, what do we have? We have oh, our x in the x direction. Sure. What else? That's it. This is the only guy in the x direction. Therefore, our x equals zero. This doesn't exist at all. There is no x reaction force. Okay? So that's one of the unknowns I just saw for. Alright, move on. Equation two. Sum of forces y equals zero. Left hand side. Expand that okay, by looking at the free body diagram. So point out all the forces in the y direction. I have R Y. Now since I assume that this points up, so that's positive. What else? I got F one minus F1 and then minus W. That's it. Alright, so there's no other forces vertically. Right hand side equals zero. Here I have only one unknown which is R Y. Equals move the other two guys over. Plug it in. F one is twelve hundred. W is nine eighty one. So that's twenty one eighty one. Mm -hmm. That's it. And that's positive number. This means that positive means my assumption of the direction is correct. Therefore, R Y, yes, is indeed pointing upward. Okay? Alright, so I knocked two guys down. I need to find the, the last one. It's M A. What is M A? Well, let's apply the last equation. Okay? So, now first, uh, 
by the way, you realize that we have three unknowns here, Rx, Ry, and Ma, and we have three equations. So three unknowns, three equations, mathematically, we're okay. Okay, so you can never have more unknowns than available equations. Okay, so let's look at this last equation. Sum a moment. So which point are you gonna sum a moment about? You can put you can choose any point along this rigid body or outside a rigid body. Doesn't matter. But keep in mind, moment. Okay. Equals R cross Okay, vector is form. In terms of scalar, moment equals f times d. d is the perpendicular distance, the shortest distance, right, between whatever point you take moment about and the line of action, the force. So this means that if you take moment about, let's say, this end point right here, then I will have to take into account this weight. Okay, because this weight will generate a moment, right, about this point, right, and the distance is here. This F1 also have a second moment, okay, so it's F1 times this distance right here. Ry will also have a moment, okay, Ry times the entire length of the rigid body. That's another moment. Now, is there a point that I can choose where I can simplify a little bit? So. So I don't have to take into account all these forces. What if I choose a point where this d is zero? Okay. So what are the force that is? Right. This d, the distance okay, between the force and this point, is zero, which means this point that I choose to take moment about actually is on the line of action of the force. Okay? So in other words, the force passes through the point I take moment about. So look at this right here. If I choose this point right here, this point A, if I take moment about this point A, then immediately R Y and R X will disappear in this moment. Okay, R X and R Y don't create any moment at all because D, this distance, is zero. Okay? And since up here, I already determined that Rx is zero. So, you know, that's already quite simple to begin with, right? But if I choose this point as the point I take the moment about, then yeah, I can just eliminate this Ry altogether, right? So just to make it a little easier, okay? So let's do that. I'm going to make some space here. So equation three, sum of forces, now about point A equals zero. Okay, so some some moment, right, about point eight. So look at a free body diagram again. R X R Y don't care about because they don't create a moment. And before you can actually proceed, you need to de uh, define positive as counterclockwise or clockwise. So uh, I'm just gonna say clockwise. Okay. So the first moment, okay, is coming from this force. So it's F1 times, let's say, D1. Okay, or D1 is this distance. Okay, and this force about point A would, would create a clockwise moment, so that's positive. Okay, and then the next moment comes from this W. Again, it's positive, right? So about point A. So W times D2. D2 is this right here, this distance. Okay, the perpendicular distance. There's a third moment on okay, the left hand side, which is this right here. And that's exactly the unknown. And since this MA, again, I don't know the direction, I just assume that it goes counterclockwise, so I need to be consistent with that. So minus MA. That's it. So you go to zero. Therefore, move things around. Unknown left hand side, F1, D1 plus. W D two plug in numbers twelve hundred times two meters plus nine eighty one times three meters right half of the length right plug in numbers 